I'm Daniel Harvey, and I'm the Global Practice Lead for Experience Design at Sapient Nitro. Well, I think the most important thing really is I want to see process. I don't want to just see the final output. I want to see your thinking. I want to, under, I want to understand how you make, how you think, uh, and just as importantly, how you collaborate. So to understand when you got involved with a, with a project, uh, how you got involved with a project, who you collaborated, who you, who you collaborated with, uh, how effective that collaboration was, uh, and things like that. In addition to seeing, a, obviously, a stellar, uh, stellar portfolio in and of itself. But it's, I think, a lot of people fall down in just thinking that the work speaks for itself, and all good work should speak for itself. But we need to, we need it to be about you as much as it is about the work. Yeah, I, I generally, uh, if I'm just sort of looking at a, at a CV online, um, I'll likely start with the work itself uh, and then go into you know, CV style information or about information uh, and, then, and then go from there. I think, I think sometimes in the resumes that, I, that I'm looking at in particular since my field is relatively new, uh, sometimes one of the questions that we have to ask ourselves is, um, what strength will somebody have in, in, in the role of an experienced designer? Are they more of, a, more of an architect, more of a designer? Uh, and then start to figure some of that out. And obviously there's still, even though I think there, the roles are understood now, I think there are still sometimes, particularly because startups uh, and university programs create environments for hybrid talents to emerge uh, in a larger agency context or in a larger, larger corporation context. Uh, those entities will have specific groups and, and domains that those people could fall one way or the other into. And so part of what I'll do if I'm looking at the resume of somebody on the cusp like that, it'll be to figure out, well, are they more of a, more of a UX person or more of a visual designer in the terms of the broader context of how we organize talent here? Um, I'll, I'll be honest, it's been a while since I've seen one that really wowed me. Um, but I, I think the ones that do, uh, without naming names, are the ones that go into that level of extra detail that I was talking about at the start, where you're, you're actually telling a story, you're treating the work as, as we would as an agency, as a case study. So you're talking about what, what, the, what the objective was, how you got involved, what the variations were along the way, and then sort of slowly, gracefully getting into the, into the finished product and showing everything everything worth showing along the way. And I think that those kinds of portfolios that really take the time to really sort of craft that narrative around the work so that we can better understand what your POV as a creative is, uh, those are the ones that really shine. I don't really care either way. I, I, think, the, I think brands are largely uh, a surrogate for, for the industry sector anyway. Um, uh, I think what, what gets interesting is with a number of us are, are fortunate enough to be on agency of record accounts or on retainer accounts. Uh, and so I think the, the real question then is, do you sort of put all your, all your stuff for one client in one sort of big story or do you break it out uh, into several different sort of more project oriented stories? Um, so. Um, you know, if you've got a lot of Nike in your portfolio or a lot of this in your portfolio, pros and cons to, to both approaches in terms of that sort of initial reaction. Uh, I think it's important for designers, when they can, to show a breadth of different types of work uh, and different types of work for different types of clients. So I think if I just sort of, you, you can end up pigeonholing yourself if you're not careful. Your best work. Uh, you will always be judged by your weakest work, so try not to put that out there. Quality okay. over quantity. Are we talking password protected? Or, <laughs> um, I, I, I actually think that um, because we, we're in an environment right now where uh, people are hungry, people are pitching, a lot of pitches going on right now, um, I think uh, young designers will be inclined to put that work in their portfolio as well. And that's well and good, but dude, be smart about it. Don't put, you know, don't, don't break NDAs, don't put your, the agency you are working with in, into a sling, 
uh, and, and have those kind of financial or relationship repercussions. Be smart about what you put in, in a portfolio if your client, if the end client, isn't talking about that work yet, then if, you're, if you need to show it, then at least be discreet. Source LF are London's leading creative communications and media recruitment agency. Be sure to like our video and subscribe to this channel. Take the moment to watch another of our videos on screen now.